Hi there, my name is Lauren and I'm the Director of Product Education here at IRAD. I'm here to help you get started on your IRAD journey. Just a few things before we get started. First of all, I wanted to let you know that anything that you need to capture that's inside of your web browser, you can use our Chrome, Firefox, or Edge extension. For anything that you need to capture outside of your web browser on your desktop, we do have a desktop capture tool. If you would need to capture something that is both on your desktop and within a web browser, then it's best to use the desktop capture tool as these are separate tools and cannot be combined for one tutorial. For today's example, we're going to be showing how to label an email in Gmail using the Chrome extension. All right, let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is go to the tab that we would like to capture. From here, we're going to click the IRAD extension and click capture. And then we'll click start. After the countdown timer, the mask will be removed and we can start capturing. So we're just going to select the email, select labels, select a label, and then we'll click apply. So we'll say that's what we want to capture and we'll click the extension again and we'll click done. After that, it's going to process everything we've just done and bring us into the IRAD editor. In the IRAD editor, you'll notice we have the screenshot on the right with the highlight marker around where we clicked. This is resizable and movable. And then on the left, we have our step text. This is fully editable. And you can also edit the action. It does automatically assign an action for you, but you can always change it if you would like. Sometimes maybe even to a read step if you do need to talk more about a particular process because we do limit to 250 characters per step. So you can always duplicate that step and then change this click to a read. The hyperlink option is generally used to link out to resources such as a PDF, a website, a video, or even more another tutorial. We do recommend keeping your tutorials to be around 25 steps or so. So if you do have a longer process, feel free to string the tutorials together with this hyperlink tool on the last step. All right, so let's look at these options down here. We have add audio. So with the audio option, you have uh, the option to use our text-to-speech uh, Amazon Poly integration, or you can upload or record your own voice right in IRAD. So you can select your voice and then just click generate for all steps. So you'll notice that it has taken the text, sent it to Amazon, and Amazon has sent back an audio file. If you did change your mind, you can always delete the audio here and then record or upload your own. Once we get out of the audio editor, it'll bring us back to the editor here. And now we can click the mask option. So the, the mask option is great for hiding any type of sensitive information. Just click and drag over the area that you would like to cover. And this is permanent. So um, be sure that if, if this is something that you're not sure about, uh, you would have to recapture this again. It will detect if these pixels are on other steps as well, and so then you can click Mask All. This will apply the same blurred area to all steps in the tutorial. You can also add a step if you forgot to capture something by mistake, so just click up here, select the step that you want to insert the new steps after, and click Add Step. It will relaunch the recorder, you can click through and add the steps that you would like, and it will insert them at step four. Like we said earlier, you can always duplicate a step if needed. You can delete a step if you've captured something by mistake. Additionally, if you right click, you can move step forward or move steps back. And you can also use this drop down arrow to jump uh, steps to a further step um, in the tutorial. Here you can also change the default uh, masking option. So we also have pixelate and whiteout if you would like to change the default mask option, you can do so there. 
All right, let's go to the preview and finish screen. On the preview and finish screen, we can do several things. We can change our title, how to label email. Here you can set your privacy. Public would be indexable by all search engines and viewable by anyone. Unlisted, you have to have the link similar to a Google Doc. Embed only is our most popular option. So if you are embedding it into your LMS, knowledge base, or website, you can select those domains and it would be only viewable on those specific domains. Invite only is our most um, locked down option where they have to actually have a verified IRAD account that you invite them to and then they would sign in and they would be able to access the tutorial that way. Here's how you can share your tutorial by clicking link and embed. These two links are the exact same. This one just redirects you to this one and it will open your direct player. This is our step list mode, which if you are looking for like more of a knowledge base type article, it will have a little header here and text and a static image that is in a scrollable list for you. And then you have your interactive player at the bottom. Under embed, you have the options to select that step list option if you'd like mobile size images and if you would like to put the player first. You can also copy this embed code if you if you would like to embed it into your website or use one of our customized third-party web embed code options. From here you can also publish to any of our integrations. We have many integrations with learning management systems, knowledge base systems, and a few other cases here. We also have, we have two types of integrations. We have an API integration and we have an extension integration. Uh, but the extension integration will put our icon inside of that application and you'll be able to launch the recorder and embed it right within that third party. The layout is going to give you options as far as customizing the player and the cover. So you can click on the visibility dropdown and select which ones of these options you would like to hide or remove. And it is important to note that there are three different settings. So if you are using the direct player, you may set this, this setting. If you're embedding it, then you wanna make sure that you're clicking embed and then setting the settings, or if you're using the widget. Um, or if you're using all of them, you can always click this checkbox to apply changes to all modes. Additionally, you can set a def default mode. We do default to try it. However, you can select a different mode if you would like. And we also default to 100% zoom on the screenshots, but again, you can change it to 50% or full screenshot if you would like. We have our advanced modes here. So you have live and our quiz mode. If you toggle quiz mode on, then you can choose your acceptable time for a task. And you also have a link and embed code directly to that quiz player. You can also categorize your tutorial by selecting a category or subcategory. And then you can apply a theme. So you can upload your own logo, your own background image, and select the color of your highlight marker over here. The highlight marker can change from tutorial to tutorial, whereas your custom background and logo would remain the same across all of your tutorials. All right, let's look at the player. Here you can, as the learner, they can select their language if they have a native language different than English, and they can also select the mode unless you've hidden it. So we have our try it mode, which is our most common mode, and they have to actually click through the tutorial in order to make it advanced. So it's simulating them going through the process. Whereas view it is going to give you this scrollable list with the instructions on the right and image on the left. They can also zoom in and zoom out of the screenshot. Watch it is very similar to try it. However, it's going to automatically play on its own 
without the learner interacting with the player. We have our PDF option here, so you can choose portrait or landscape. Landscape is going to take one image per page. Portrait generally does the trick. It's going to put uh, the images into a nice neat table so that you can print it or email it however you would like to share your tutorial. And then we have our quiz option here. So you'll notice that marker that was on the screen before, the learner now has to think about where they are clicking in order to advance the player. And if they click where they're not supposed to, it's going to flash and not advance the player. At the end, it will give you results and then they can share it or just use it for their own information. Okay. All right, that's about sums up the preview and finish screen. So let's take a look at the dashboard. From the dashboard here, you can see we have our categories and subcategories. We have tags. Uh, tags, you can add multiple per tutorial, whereas the categories or subcategories can only apply be applied once to a tutorial. You can also archive and you can delete. Deleted tutorials will be uh, removed from the server within 48 hours, but if you realize you didn't mean to delete it, you can always come back into the trash and pull it out. Archive tutorials will remain active, just pulled out of your list view here. If you click on the tutorial, you can see all the main functions or actions that you can, um, you can do with this tutorial and a few to point out, revision, draft, you can duplicate or share links are right here. You can also export to Word or Google Doc as well as MP4 or upload to YouTube. We have our analytics option and we have our learner dashboard as well as the ability to enable or disable your tutorial if something is out of date and you want to remove it uh, from view. And then you can also edit your tutorial archive and delete it right here, as well as change category and add tags. All right, at the top header, we have our integrations tab. This is where you can hook up any of our API integrations. And we have our help center tab. This is where you can activate um, the web widget or extension help center. And then we have our team tab where if you are the owner of the account, then you can invite and give proper permissions to your team members. So let's look at Help Center real quick. The Help Center, like I said, we have web widget and extension. Our web Help Center, you can just click activate and then you can name it. Here's your Help Center URL to share. The embed code, which can this Help Center can be embedded within your own website or knowledge base, wherever you would like to embed it. And then you can select your theme, your help center color, select your tutorial layout. So you can choose the player or step list option. And you can choose your privacy. At the bottom, you have the views option. And this is where you can create views for specific roles or specific types of customers, however you may want to use it. So you'll just click the plus, type in the view name, enter, and now you have a view created where you can copy this link to share it or embed it with this embed code. And um, all the tutorials are automatically hidden by default. So when you select your domain, you would just click the plus next to that category and all of them would now show automatically. And you can do that per domain. All right, that about sums up you're getting started. So feel free if you have any questions, head down to this question mark widget. We have a whole bunch of tutorials that are helpful. You can search here and they're separated out by area. Or if you can't find what you need, feel free to click chat with us and we are happy to help you.